Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to More Than A Game. Um, John, let's begin with the uh, Everton's Fab Board. Fab Group, Van Avagi Board, have issued oh, letter. a letter to the... Uh, well, basically to... <laughs> To say that they want everything suspended at the moment, yeah, yeah, uh, because they're not happy with the process, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, on the back of it, on the back of it, of Nottingham Forest sending a letter to MPs yesterday. Oh, the MPs. Um, so, with Forest and and Everton voicing their unhappiness at the mm. without the two clubs doing it well although Forrest have done it to be fair they they did a huge statement the other day Evan haven't quite done that do you think there is any chance whatsoever that someone goes yeah this was the MPs wrote to the Secretary of State mm. Fab Board have issued a statement today Henry Winters has put it out I am um, do you think there's any chance of them going, yeah, we'll, we'll suspend everything and because people aren't happy? No. <laughs> In a word? No, but mm. but let, let's put some context around mm. this. Um, and I, I listened to you guys on your, your Everton show before, mm. and I think it was Ped perhaps who said something like, we've sort of had to become experts on this. Yeah. And he was talking about over the last three or four months. I think it's probably over the last year because it's that's when it all kicked off, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so for people who don't know, the the, the um, fan elected fan advisory board who deal with matters for Everton fans with the football club, which are not day to day type stuff, so strategic stuff, yeah. which all this comes into play with, issued a um, an impact statement that was put before our the appeal board. Mm. And, and clearly had some impact in the sense that it was recognised, that it was received, it was reviewed, and it, it was good. Yeah. Um, that's that's a nice little pat on the head type behaviour, I think, from the from the appeal board, right? And that's what they've done again, which makes sense, right? Mm. Um, the, the, they've produced, you know, an impact statement, and the impact being on fans, and clearly people in general, because it impacts players, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, players are talking about, you know, there's a man somewhere or a lady somewhere with a calculator giving points and taking them away, you know? Um, I think the problem that the Premier League has is that they are both um, regulator and prosecutor at the moment. And it's clear to me that they can pick and choose. They, you know, listen, the person who picks who the judge is is picked by the Premier League. Mm. The Premier League is the prosecutor and they can choose a judge that might listen to them yeah as a prosecutor or might not listen to them as a prosecutor yeah and so it's really difficult um i think what the Premier league needs to do is read the room i mean again you guys talked on your everton show about fundamentally fans throughout the country and i i follow everton home and away as you know mm. and, and i've listened to fans singing your cheats we know what you are your cheats mm. you know and nottingham forest tried to sue everton Leicester tried to sue Everton, other clubs tried to sue Everton, and all of them at some stage are going to be in breach of these rules. Mm. And we've said uh, on the Everton channel, and always on this one, points deductions is the wrong answer. Mm. It's yeah. the wrong answer. Mm. It doesn't work. Um, there's been three events. I mean, I, I was debating last night with your friend, uh, um, Stefan, and, 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 and Matt the Barrister, right, mm -hmm. who's a Nottingham Forest fan, who's as frustrated with his ownership as Everton fans would be with theirs, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it's all opinion, and, and it's vague, and it's lacking in consistency. And, you know, the, the Everton Fan Advisory Board have said, you're making it up as you go along. Yeah, That's what the Select Committee Chair said, you're making it up as you go along. Andy Burnham, you know, the Mayor of Manchester, said, Guys, you need to shut this down. It's just getting, you, you're mm. not ready for it. Um, Liverpool-based MPs said the same. Mm. Now Nottingham Forest MPs are saying the same. Mm. Across the political divide in the House of Parliament, they want the imposition of an independent regulator as quickly as possible. I had this debate last night with the, with the lawyer, sorry, the barrister who's a, who, who, who's a Nottingham Forest fan. I'm saying, I said to him, I said, well, in your case, the judge has kicked something down for the for the next commission to look at, mm. even though he must know that there are not going to be any next commissions after Everton and Nottingham Forest with the rules as they are. So we're in the, like, 
the death knell and the wriggle, the last wriggles of a set of policies and procedures and rules which are just not fit for purpose, and yet a couple of clubs are getting sent to the gallows anyway. Hmm. I mean, know, I, it's madness, total do you, madness. Do and, you look and at Premier that? League need to read the room. They really need to read the room. Do know, you look at that and think? There's no way these should be implemented then. If the Premier League them, because this is what I know the, the fan advisory board from Everton have said in it's their an statement. It's an impact statement, by the way. And even if you're mm. not an Everton fan, you really should read it because it is. And Forest fans, get your foot your um, fan trust or football trust to do something similar. And that's really what you're asking, isn't it? Well, I'm saying it, to be a should it, here. Yeah. Well, should it just be scrapped then? Because if 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 I've got rules in place and I think these aren't these aren't right. Mm. Why should two clubs be to to say what you've just said? Be sent to the gallows if they're getting changed anyway. If this crime doesn't, do you know what I mean? I the, think my issue with it is that it's not. It was never in. It's never in black and white. There's I, nothing it, set out. Mate, winds me up. You know, part of, part of the the the, the reasons that. Um, you know, you, you might have ding-dongs with some pundits or, or commentators or bloggers mm. or whatever you want to call people is we all look at these things in a different way. Of course, If yeah. you do them absolutely, truly, objectively, without any emotion whatsoever, mm. it's very easy, for, and I'll say it now, actually, yeah. for the prosecutor that is the Premier League yeah. to acknowledge, uh, to, to try and execute the rules to, the, to their best advantage, which is to put punitive damages against those who transgress their rules. Yeah. Whilst at the same time, the regulator, that is the Premier League, can acknowledge that those rules are not appropriate mm. and seek to change them. But the reality is the board is two people, <laughs> right? And it's Richard Masters and, 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 and Alison Britton, and everything must go across their desks. And I don't know whether they go, oh, regulator hat on, oh, prosecutor yeah. hat on. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's a classic, if I was going there, I wouldn't start from here situation. Mm. This should have been killed, or, or certainly a heavy review, perhaps press the pause button, when a, um, to, to keep the analogy going, when a hanging judge gave Everton 10 points mm. and the shock throughout the industry was, oh my, what? No, really? But it, it didn't, did it? It went to appeal. There was legal errors. An arbitrary reduction down to six come along for a 19.5 million breach, then the next guys down the track get the benefit of there's been two already. Mm. Yeah, They breach by 34 and a half and get a smaller punishment. And then people start trying to second guess, how did Everton get six for 19.5 when these guys got four? Although they can see line of sight because they were good boys and you keep saying sending emails and stuff, right? But even the judge in the, um, the Nottingham Forest Independent Commission said, I don't know why Everton got the extra three points. Really? Mm. Shouldn't that be part of his research into maintaining consistency? So, and by the way, and I know you do this a lot when you say you're not having a go at, you know, stuff so that people know it's just your opinion. My opinion is I don't think there's any incompetence or lack of performance in any of what those commissions have done with the, if you like, the, um, the terms of reference that they got given. Mm. So all nine of them, have done the best they can with a really bad hand. Yeah. And the really bad hand is a lack of guidelines from the regulator. And the regulator is the Premier League. So the regulator either regulates or presses a pause button and says, you know what, sorry, we are digging a deeper hole every time we do one of these. Mm -hmm. There's a deeper hole being dug. I, I, I sat here and said a number of weeks ago on this channel, right, the Premier League should be seeking to get neither Nottingham Forest yeah, nor yeah. Everton to appeal whatever happens. I now feel intuitively, and certainly Everton hasn't even started yet, that both will appeal. Do you? I do. I, no, no, no. Let me rephrase it. Which makes a mockery. Let me rephrase it. Mm. Both should appeal. For the good of football, both should appeal. Because... And but, that's wrong because it's not for the good of football because it means the season won't, say it won't be for the good of football, but, will it? But, but the Premier League is sitting. The Premier League seems to be play, or the, as a regulator. I mean, right? Because the regulator is the one who has to, um, um, in you know, interject with what's going on mm. and so stop. Well, the rules aren't quite right. These these are unsound convictions. That's mm. fundamentally. I think the Forest one is unsound because it clearly, in in comparison with the Everton one doesn't seem right from a sanctioning point of view. Mm. Now, is that because Forrest is right and Everton's was too high? 
or is that that Forrest is wrong and Evans was you know was too low and Evans is that needs to be brought out and settled because what I, Forrest might appeal or they might just take the chances, yeah. but Premier League as a regulator relying upon those people i.e. the Everton people and the Nottingham Forest people, to do the right thing mm. when they're not prepared to do the right thing is crazy. Yeah. And, and I have no confidence that the Premier League are, are going to stop it anyway. But but the body of evidence there coming from, you know, p- politicians and pundits and and uh, and the two football clubs who both s- seem to suggest in their statements in the Everton's in the past and now Forest the other day that the Premier League is two-faced as a prosecutor. Mm. You know, and maybe that isn't, the prosecution part of the Premier League, that's two faces, it's the regulatory part. So mm. maybe no one knows who it is is doing a crap job. We just see the outcome. Yeah. It's mad. Bad. It is. It's totally it, mad. It's a crazy thing. And it's, nobody should get points for this thing. No, the, the points deduction is nonsense. It's yeah. utter nonsense. Um, again, to make this league, you know, this league is weighted so heavily in the favour of a few of anyway. The halves, yeah. Um, the ones who had the good fortune to spend when they wanted to before all this stuff started to bite. Yeah. Mm. And the balance of it isn't great. And to, if you're looking at the football as a whole and we try to look at it as, as objectively as you can, and I understand that it's difficult, we're all tribal. We all don't like our clubs being criticised. But again, let's be clear, not sat here saying Everton are innocent. And I don't think Forest fans would sit there going, we're innocent at to the point where there's a line and yeah. the club has gone past that line. We understand. We understand. The problem you've got is you've got opposition fans who just want to, who can't get over their tribalism. That's true. Yeah. And throw things out. You know, if there's one, James is in the comments here, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. You know, stop being deluded. You overspent, you broke the rules, you got the punishment, get on with it. I'm cool with that. Hmm? I'm cool with that as long as the punishment is hmm. consistent. And I don't know which team this guy supports. Yeah. But James, I'm, let us know who you support, pretty, just out of interest. I'd be amazed Please, if mate. it's an Everton or Nottingham Forest fan. It won't be. Of course <laughs> it won't. It'll be, I imagine, and he could say whatever, couldn't he? Cause, but you're yeah, acting, but you're acting in good faith. People, yeah. I imagine he's, he supports a team in the top six, but I don't know. You might be He'll totally wrong. But us. James, just out of interest, who do you follow? Yeah. Because this is... I think we as fans need to push past some of the... And we can have the banter. He can, you know... You say what he wants. Seeing like, sing with cheats at the game and the like, but don't let people... Well, life comes at you fast, doesn't yeah. it? Because Forrest was singing that in yeah. when we beat them in no, December and, and obviously it. they're that's in trouble. It, Leicester, yeah. you know, uh, uh, and, and they're in massive trouble yeah, now yeah. for next season. Um, and that's just the way it is. But again, just to, just to reiterate, right, I look at it as... What what can football be overall? Mm. It's heading in one direction that I don't agree with, which is literally lessen the opportunity for 14 clubs to make sure you protect six at the top. I don't understand that. That's competition to me. Because no. all you're doing yeah. is you're just going, well, they're the top now and they're the top kind of, in general, they'll be up there every year. And we might get a Newcastle one year, but... When they do, it'll kick in and, and they won't be able to go any further. And Villa have had a great season, but they have to sell Ollie Watkins in the summer or Jacob Brown well to make sure they well don't done. pat on the head. You might do it again next year, but you probably won't. But well done, you might do. And then in a two years' time, we might get Brighton break into it because they have a perfect season, but then we'll get the pat on mm. the head. because we. And that is the way it is. And, and if you don't see it like that, then fine. Mm. But, but just go and have a look over the, and you can't come back and go. Well, it's just fortunate, you know. That's just the way the chips have fell. It isn't because basically, the biggest indicator of where a team finishes is the wage bill. Yes, really. Totally. And that's that's the killer. And the wage bill, you know, I keep saying it. There I'm, are a number of clubs in the Premier League whose wage bill is bigger than the turnover. Probably, well, certainly of Everton, and probably well. Forest Forrest well. the turnovers less than Everton's. Therefore, those two clubs are the ones getting punished, mm. and yet other clubs have got wage bills alone more than their total. Well, turnover. I always use I always, I always use Liverpool as the analogy here. Simply, oh, this is triple. No, but idea. simply because they play in the same city as yeah, us yeah. and they play in the same division as us, yes. and yet their wage bill is more than double ours. Nearly two and a half, in the, three times in the same city, and that and I use that. Liverpool have been 
I've done brilliantly and I've been run brilliantly and I've been successful and all that outstanding, no issue with it. But I just I just use that as a measuring bar to go, they're in the same city as us. And you were right. And they're in the same league as yeah, us. I think you're right to do that because the the um the appeal board judge that Everton got talked about he actually says, and guys, you can read it, it's not too difficult to find it yourself, is that maintaining sporting integrity is more important than punishing these clubs. Okay, well, Ped put Ped, and I'll bring Ped in here now because he brought a brilliant point up on our last one. And he's absolutely right because I, I often will say the Premier League handbook references PSR eight times in a 346 page document. And it's a heavy read. And it's never, ever, ever used in line with sporting advantage That's ever. That's right. Yeah, not yeah. once. But like Ped said, and I'll bring him in there <laughs> PSR wasn't brought in. To curtail sport, or, to, or to, well, yeah, to curtail sport and advantage. That isn't the reason why it's there. If that was in there, we are bringing these rules in to protect, make sure no one gets sport and advantage. Undue, yeah, yeah, that's not in there. But Ped, I stop mean, people, it's supposed to be to stop people going out. Of what business, is? I mean, Ped always, well, exactly, stops you from going out of business. But Ped brought it up again before, and and for people who didn't see what we were doing before, the laughable thing here, Ped, is that people then use PSR as a reason to keep it to stop Manchester City and Newcastle yeah yeah that's, <laughs> that's what everyone always says don't you you listen to Gary yeah, Neville I was you, in the car listening yeah, when you I listen to way, Gary yeah. Neville or you listen to anyone it's it's or Sky if you up. do that if you <laughs> listen to you know Radio 5 will have the pundits on and they'll say the same thing without PSR Manchester City and Newcastle will just be able to do what they want well so the thing that was brought in to stop clubs going bust is actually just a a lever to stop two states running away mm. and, you know, sports washing to their hearts content. If that's what people feel, that's what they're doing. So do something about that then. Mm. When you're right, when you say do something about that, because it does have the smell, doesn't it, of 10 years ago. I mean, at the end of the day, the Premier League keeps tracking what UEFA do. And UEFA certainly were trying to curtail the spending of Premier League football clubs, not individual clubs per se, but the buying power of the Premier League. But when they brought profitability and sustainability in, in the Premier League, it was exactly what we've just said. It was all about stopping clubs going out of business. Well, maybe, Baz, that was just the excuse they gave to get people to think it was a good idea. Yeah. Mm. But let's say they were genuine, genuine in doing that. Now they're trying to use it to control sporting advantage mm. or, or literally limit one or two yeah, or three yeah. clubs' ability mm. to push themselves up the league and upset the status quo. And you've often mentioned on the Everton Channel and on this one, you know, the letter that the so-called Big Six sent say, you need to sort this out. Yeah, you know? well, that was to stop Manchester City, that, wasn't well, it? Well, that was Man City, and then, of course, Man City then become part of the, the Six or whatever, mm. you know, and they've been there quite a long time. Then Newcastle's ownership pops up, and then it becomes, we're not having this, yeah? Yeah. And then we've got all the third-party rules that get changed instantly. And it's clear as day they were specifically targeting Newcastle United. Right now, was that some moral thing about sports washing, you know, of you know, uh, you know, and and stuff, or was it just vested interest saying we want to keep them in their place? Mm. And I think it's hard, you know, for anyone to be totally impartial on answering that question unless just settle for it's a bit of both. Um, so, Ped's right. If you've now decided you need some regulations to stop mm. dominantly financially powerful. Um, businesses totally dominating the sport. Well, bring in rules that do that then, mm. you know, and, and we've talked about them on our channels very frequently and I've done articles for it as well, right, on, on the uh, mm. written Substack stuff mm. that we have. And it, you can't avoid, a, a, or I haven't anyway, a view that it's what you just said. Most of the clubs in the Premier League, maybe two-thirds or more of them, are there just to make the numbers up. Mm. Nobody, you're not allowed to come and play up in the stratosphere, guys. You're there to make up the numbers. And if one of you breaks out occasionally, that's good. But you know what? Where it is, the rules will get you. And you'll have to sell that player. You found the next Messi, but you can't mm. keep him. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't well, turn over enough. Yeah. We had, I mean, James is a Crystal Palace fan, so fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. But James, it isn't how it's being portrayed as well. You're right. Listen, we've sat and talked as Evertonians. I spoke to a Forest fan last night. He said the same thing. No one's defending how poorly run 
we've oh gosh, we've been we've known we're, about we're in, that for quite a long time as Everton fans, fans yeah. protested against the owners uh, if so the, the board, board. Yeah, and yeah. things like that because we knew we were being run poorly the the issue that Evertonians have is a the rules were changed halfway through building a stadium. You know, I'm sure Steve Parrish will be absolutely livid if Crystal Palace had got to build that stand that they keep trying to build, but cost has gone up and they haven't been able to do it. If the Premier League said to Steve Parrish, yeah, it's acceptable to build that. Mm. And that costing, you can think you won't be punished for it because that's helping Crystal Palace fans. It's helping the local community get on with it. And then halfway through, they said to Steve Parrish, Oh, you're not having them numbers. No, for the ground now. You're not having that. We've changed it. We've changed it now, and you're now going to fail PSR, so you have to sell Eze or Elise. And we'll give you the time that you have to sell them by. And if you do it like that, we won't, you know, we won't do you. And so you do it, and then they still do you. You will be angry. We're not sat here, and I don't think Forest fans in, in general are sat there saying we're innocent because there's a rule in place so you're correct to point that out the rules in place and Everton have gone past it therefore there must be some kind of punishment I agree the thing what as an Evertonian I struggle with is that thing where if you're building a stadium and it's going to take you four years to build the stadium there's nothing you can do in other than follow the process that it's an oil tanker you can't turn it round and do it it takes four turn. years to build it if you mean you agree to something for your, see where I struggle with the Premier League with this is they should have said right at the very start, no, you can't. It, everything you do with that is gonna go against a your losses. Thing. A losses, a loss. So that's yeah. the way it is, right? I'd have been cool with that. I'd have gone, okay, well that they've told us, off we go. Or I think if you once you say yep, yeah, that's fine, because we accept you're putting mm. more infrastructure, you're making jobs, you're building, you're making it better, bloody making the the thing better for Premier League fans. They should have covered the whole building process, but they didn't. They changed the rules halfway through. They ignored. We lost a big sponsor due to a, a well, war. Well, that will come out in the next. That'll one. come on the next one, right? But the stadium yeah. thing. But I'm not. I'm again. I'm even that. It's still run badly. It, it, but it doesn't. It doesn't change the fact that we are. We run poorly. I think most Evertonians would agree with you. Run really badly, really badly because we just didn't have a grip on anything. And we didn't even the the big you know the biggest kicker James from an Evertonian perspective is they didn't push the boat right out. They may as well have gone right out. They just edged over the line. They should have gone. Oh, forget we're, we're, we're going to fail, so we may as well fail big. We'll take a point trip, but you know what? Our front three will be unbelievable, and they'll get us. Then you know we might lose ten points or eight points, but it won't matter in the long run because we'll get a we'll get a kick. That'll be a punishment and we'll do. But we didn't. Everton didn't even do that. And if you look at the real numbers and we've had to do this, everything is trending downwards from 2020. And 21, yeah. And 21. So Everton have been positive. Everton are one of a handful, of, well, not one of three Two. teams who've had positive PSR for five years in terms of player trading. They are third bottom for net spend in the last five years where players are concerned. And Everton of one or two teams who made a profit in the last year for player trading. So that's the area that mm. we've looked at in terms of on field stuff. So that's why when people go, oh, you're a cheat, you have done this, you have done that, that is all nonsense because all the facts are there. There's other stuff. The stadium has kicked us where we are. Bad commercial decisions has put us where we are. I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that at all. The thing what winds me up a little bit is when that's trotted out, the reason is you spent loads of money on it's all these lazy. players. It's a bit it's lazy. It's lazy because when you actually do the sums, the net spend over eight years is 60 million or something like that. You've had this argument with Carragher more than once. Exactly. So that's where it is. Lazy. I'm not I'm not saying that, but points deductions, James, just to reiterate, for me, is not the right answer for anybody. Anybody, whether it, again, I've said it before, you know, City, Chelsea, whatever. I, I Points deductions should only ever be in my opinion and it's only my opinion that if you have a player who isn't registered or something in the game then you have tried to influence that game by something that isn't legal in my opinion but I still I'm not a fan of it I think transfer bans which can be hugely detrimental to football clubs are much more um, 
severe punishment in my opinion. But you know what you're dealing with, and what the tr- you see a points deduction. I will shut up now. I apologise. A <laughs> points deduction. I've got a question for you. When okay, you hammers you on two levels because it it or it obviously puts you into a position where you are in trouble in the Premier League if it's Everton or it's Nottingham Forest. But as well as that, it's meta placings, isn't it? Everton had to play three months with a ten point deduction that dropped them from twelfth into the bottom three. So you've got the psychological effect of that, but put that to one side. 2.1 or 2.2 million. Two. 2 million per place. So Everton dropped six places, 12 million quid as well, at a time when we're getting told off for not being able to create like better finances. So if you give us a transfer ban or give Forrest a transfer ban or any club, if it's Crystal Palace or if you go over this, you get a transfer ban. We'd all know, wouldn't we? And what mm. we'd do is we'd have to go... Well, by not being able to sign anyone, therefore our finances get better. But your performances might get worse. They may do, but that's you. That's you. Listen, that's you. No, I get it. That's you. No, I get it. Isn't it? That's yeah, on yeah. you. So for Everton next year, I've said this on another no show. Pain, I'll no quickly game. say it right. now. Everton next year, if we got a trail, if they went right, no points. Give you all the points back, but you can't buy anyone for a year. Mm. We'd be in a bit of trouble because two of our wingers are on loan. So we'd have to promote from the the twenty ones and the eighteens. And then the manager would have a tough time keeping Everton up. But hey, how we knew. But, and the other thing, James, as well, and this is the final thing I'll say in it, is if these rules were written down in black and white, we'd, all we'd have all known anyway. So yeah. there wouldn't be any argument. No one would be moaning. We'd just be like, listen, fair cop, guff. Mm. You know, we knew this was going to happen because whatever. And that transfer ban could be extended by uh, amounts that you go over. And if it and fines then and obviously if you took the if you took the piss and went we're a hundred million over from buying two players because we're accepting it, then that should be like three year transfer ban or and, whatever and whatever kind the of the bigger fine. the crime the bigger the punishment mm. and that's not what's happened. I just make an observation then I've got a question for you. I mean it's really hard for fans generally to be impartial. Oh yeah, right. I get it. Because I get it. If Everton get their six points back, it's not going to happen. But no. say they did, mm. we'd be above Crystal Palace, mm. right? So if that just state that was the difference, mm. then Crystal Palace will get £2 million less money mm. and Everton will get £4 million more money because mm. Everton would also go to Brentford. Mm. So Brentford would lose £2 million as well. So it's not a surprise mm. when, when they go in a board meeting that Brentford and Crystal Palace's chief exec or chair, whoever it is who represents them, can't help but look, well, that will cost us this, mm. that will cost us that. When all that gets debated out, mm. the treacherous six sit on their thrones thinking... We just have to let these guys talk about it. The big six, John. I prefer trackers. I know, but you're on the general football know, channel, so bias never, has to I'm be still, put... I'm, yeah, but you're after, I'm entitled to opinion, yeah. right? Um, not the fans, the owners. Again, it's back around that loop again, isn't it? It's owners, right? Anyway, um, so it's difficult. Of course it's difficult. But this cheat thing, right? Mm. If you breach PSR, it seems to be... Everton are cheats because they've breached it. Mm. Therefore, one assumes Nottingham Forest are cheats. Mm. And Aston Villa are going to have to sell to avoid breaching it, so they're trying to avoid being called cheats. Mm. Newcastle are going to have to sell to avoid breaching it. Therefore, they're going to mm. try and avoid being called cheats. Mm. Leicester are already getting called cheats. Mm. And I don't think any of them are cheating. Mm. You, you draw a gain line and everyone goes up to it. And everyone tries to see if they can get away with going past of course, it. Yeah. And you've called it out. If, and it's all coming in, isn't it? Evan got 10 points, which is crazy. Mm. Now it's become the answer is between three and eight, right? Yeah. And Everton got six. Mm. So the very worst breach under the current rules would get eight. Mm. And Everton have had the smallest breach so far mm. and got six. Mm. That's farcical completely farcical you just need in quotes one row clubs to say you know what i'm just going to spend mm. right and i only get eight and i only get eight mm. and if, if what i do in spending right means i gain 15 points mm. i'm ahead aren't i yeah and and there's all those intangibles as you've called who knows and it'll only be when they write books you know there's another another book in there in our manager there isn't there you know when he talks about you can write books on the time at everton about how the players and the coaching staff and all those people really mm. felt when this 10 points was up hanging over them and mm. and they had to try and fight just to get back to zero again it is it's, it's a, 
it's gone and wrong. run and run. It's, all it's wrong, gone and run and run. Um, Simon says here, PSR was introduced in 2013 That's and right, totally yeah. ignored for a decade. That's Not true. surprising that teams weren't worrying about it much. No, they weren't. That's yeah. very, I mean, that sums it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as soon as it got stress tested, it was found to be inadequate. Yeah, it is crazy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, CRPM2017 says, you're being tribal, Baz, by asking James who he supports. No, I'm not. I was asking him who he supports. Yeah. Simple question. Yeah. Um, where are we? Who we support does influence what we think about these things. Not no, we're not. Forest fans had a different view when it was just Everton who'd been done, and now they still have a slightly different view, but they now feel in the heat that Everton fans have suffered for getting on for a year mm, but you just uh, it, it is it's, all listen, it's always difficult to it's always difficult to put you the tribalism to what's part of what makes the game so it just is what it is but rivalry but you know that's there you go isn't it impartial mediator says i don't think Everton or forest should have had points deducted they should have dealt with man city and chelsea uh, Everton and forest weren't they just never spent it, listen it is what it is isn't it we've we know that. that this is why we're saying about the league, to make it more, to keep people's dreams alive, is increase the spending option for teams near the bottom. As change in, the mechanism. Change the determine. mechanism for it. So, you know, I've spoke before. You know, Gary Neville went on the overlap the other week was talking about everyone should be able to spend as high as the, the top club. That's one way to do it. Add lower that slightly um, and just take a medium view of it and go well and work it out and, and you'd need more intelligent people than me to do it but meet somewhere so if it was 400 million say it was City we use them oh, as women this is the squad ratio thing. right well not even squad no, just, no, but this is how much you can spend no, but that's what yeah. starts the debate and if it, right. if it ended the number came out of 250 million everyone mm-hmm. can spend 250 million your owners have obviously got a Underwrite mm. it. You can't just have Everton go and we're spending two hundred and fifty million and no one's underwriting it. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Sure. But if they because then that way everyone has the dream. Is this on that just on players happen. you mean, basically? Yeah, 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 yeah. And and see where we go with that because then the teams those teams at the top don't really spend realistically, they don't spend that money anyway no. each summer. So you're not really in hampering them. Let's do it then. What you're doing is you you're giving everybody the opportunity if they've got the funds to be able to do it. So, so City, they've got the biggest turnover at the moment, haven't they? Mm. And for those people who don't know, the squad ratio is the way UEFA are, are, are defining these rules. And mm. The Premier League are expected to do something similar, and it doesn't happen overnight. But the, the objective is that you get to a point whereby you take your turnover. Um, and 70% of your turnover can be spent on player and player related stuff, which if you keep it simple, it's amortization of transfer fees, what you actually pay the player and what you pay agents. Mm. And that can't be more than 70% of your turnover. Mm. So if we say City's turnover is 700 million. 700 million, wasn't it? And 70% of that is 490 million pounds a year. Mm. That's more than double Everton's turnover. Mm. So you would be in it. Well, do you wafer? You could find Everton, <laughs> dream, eh? But you could find Everton and Man City playing in the same UEFA competition, mm-hmm. and UEFA would say, actually, City, you can spend on players twice as much as Everton earn through everything. Mm. Okay. And we talked about this a number of weeks ago, didn't we? Mm. And said, well, we'll just let everyone spend 490 million then. Yeah. Yeah. And then Newcastle fans, gosh, would you be chuffed? Mm. The wealthiest owners on the planet, you could just spend four hundred and ninety million pounds every single year mm-hmm. on players and transfer fees and agents fees. Mm. And guess what? Eventually, and it might be quite quick if you literally did spend that. Mm. But most clubs wouldn't get anywhere near mm-hmm. that limit, would they? But it wouldn't curtail City, would it? And it wouldn't curtail Man United with a big turnover, and it wouldn't curtail Liverpool with a big turnover. No. And Arsenal. So on, Arsenal, got big, Arsenal. Arsenal got a big so, turnover. So. What's happened over the last year with Everton fans is we've matured up a bit, haven't we, and understood about how some of these things can be tweaked yeah. to be perhaps in a better place. And I think what you're saying is don't make it 490. Mm. Make it to half that say. Yeah, yeah. Two, you, you've got to, there's got to be a bit of yeah. like realism yeah. as so, well. Yeah, so you half it, and then in theory, your Newcastle 
couldn't spend 490 they could only spend 250 but mm -hmm. city don't spend i don't think anyway maybe they do 490 million pounds a year every year on things associated with footballers because their squad ratio would be at 70 percent. i guess mm -hmm. it's less than that yeah. yeah um so the time to do this is when they implement these new rules yeah because they get one chance don't they to get it right mm -hmm. without negatively impacting anybody because it say you say to city you can only spend 250 million pounds on whatever and city say well we only spend 190 now so okay mm -hmm. yeah but well, everybody would have a crack at it then yeah. wouldn't they and, yeah. that, and that hope would be there mm -hmm. yeah Dylan says don't let james opinions uh, ruining your opinion of Crystal Palace. They haven't, James, no, is entitled to his opinions. It's, it's, yeah. it's Palace are sound. No issues with them. Um, just, just look did. at the league table and ask yourself if you've got a 10 point deduction, regardless of which club you you, you know you, um, support, if you got dumped on you an unjust and disproportionate penalty for some crime you committed and the answer was minus 10 points, what it would do to your league position. And then it took you three, four months or whatever it was to get that down to six. And then you found out that the, your, one of your competitors did a bigger crime and only got four mm. and so on. And you just imagine what that does, messes with your head. Yeah, just messes with your head. And that's yeah. why we end up as Everton fans saying, it's not right. Not, not for us, generally it's not right. I don't want Crystal Palace suffering this, do you, fans? I mean, we don't want any. I it's keep just, saying it; it's irrelevant to, yeah. to me. With whatever you do with that, At the end of the day, points deductions aren't appropriate. It's just, that, mm. in my opinion, it's only my opinion. They're not appropriate in any way. Um, and I've got no one going. Well, you've done this, you've done that. Well, listen, <laughs> you look. I mean, James is talking about his club. His club was ten minutes from going. Bank out of business. Forget about bankruptcy or anything else. It was ten minutes from the going. Simon Jordan. On. If they had to march, and P Steve Paris took it over. You go and watch the the documentary on Amazon, which is brilliant about them, the Crystal Palace thing. And I Paris watched did them. A good job. It, it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. And I, you know, I was like, oh, made up for the Palace fans. Yeah. Out, outstanding. Their club was run pathetically. They were a, they were gone. They were gone, and Steve Paris rescued it. Everton are nowhere near that situation. So keep calling Everton a basket case, bankrupt club is nonsense. Because I know you should know because your club was. It's not quite there. And it, it lessens your argument then, or lessens your opinion, your point of view. One of the biggest football clubs in the world, which are a quarter of a mile away from Everton Stadium, mm -hmm. was within 30 minutes ago and out of business. No, I know. I know. It can they weren't badly run per se, mm -hmm. but it can happen. So... Be careful what you wish for. Mm. You know, Man City, Man United, Arsenal, Tottenham, Chelsea. You know, look at Chelsea, a distressed sale. Okay, the person who caught the cold big star was the owner. Mm. But imagine if that had been turned into punishing the, the club itself mm. with massive points deductions and transfer. Mm. I know they got transfer bans, but you know what I mean. Um, and the fans are the victims of all of this. It, it just ah, Fans need to get on the same side and just have stuff that is transparent. We all know where we stand, you know. And it's more, you know, fact-based VAR rather than a load of subjective yeah, I stuff. Don't, I don't. Again, the couple of I, I keep keep reiterating it, and I, I won't be changed on it. Points deductions aren't appropriate. It hurts the fans, and it hurts the players. The players don't decide to go and buy it. It's not like they're the ones going right. We're buying Kylian mm -hmm. Mbappe for the club, and the club can't That's do right, nothing yeah. about it. And yet they're punished. Mm -hmm. And us as fans, let's be honest, footballers come and go. They do. They come and go. They come to your club. They take Fancy the money yeah. and they go. Right? Some are brilliant at your club and others come and just take the money and, and offer you, you know, very little in return. And, and we've had our fair share of them. Mm. And loads of others have. Um But at the end of the day, fans are the ones who get hurt by this because it's our we live it and breathe it all the time. Forest fans are going through it now. It's this is not a, an appropriate sanction. And when we're talking about the spending cap if you want to call it that that's for me to try to give every fan the hope it of course there's caveats to it Luton aren't going to spend 250 million are they because they probably haven't got but they won't have that money but it doesn't mean Luton can't get investments and Luton could attract a consortium could attract a hedge fund whatever you go we'll we'll have a right good go with this and give you 250 million to spend same as and see where we go mm. There's obviously you've got to look at the whole thing, but let's not get away from the fact why PSR was brought in, and it was brought in 
to stop clubs going out of business. If you've got owners who are saying, we guarantee you this, this is not going out of business because we've got this money here, then it is a restriction of trade in, in a way. And these rules were, were hastened by a few clubs wanting to curtail Manchester City spending. John touched on it before. When Newcastle started looking at getting this, oh, we'll, we'll get a bigger sponsor, they had a quick meeting to go, no, you can't do that either. Then now they've had one, you can't loan players from. But because they're trying to now stop Newcastle. Is everybody wanting to do that? I don't know. But that's these are the meetings. So I think we just need an overhaul of it all. Otherwise, we are going to get to a position where it is, if it isn't already there, where you haven't even got hope as a Crystal Palace fan mm. or as an Evertonian or as a, a Forest fan or as a um, Brighton fan, really. Or someone else in the middle of that. Coach, Sheffield, aren't they? You look and go, well, there's no hope. Yeah. We go up, or we're in the Premier League and we're trying to finish on 40 points every season, and that's our that's winning a trophy for us. And one year, someone might drop a little bit, and we might be able to nick a place in the Conference League if we're lucky, and if everyone else does well, because we finished eighth that year. And other teams just haven't been as good because they're in a transit, you know, a, a transitional period. I don't think that's good for any league. But hey, hope. Can you imagine it, it's, we, we have a league here whereby, and it, someone like say Man United are worth, you know, in in, in perceived value, not what they, they are on the stock market. Yeah, mm. six or seven billion pounds or something, mm. and you could probably buy Luton for a hundred million. Mm. So if you're an investor, you think, whoa, apparently, and this is the Premier League telling us this. The best league in the world, mm. the most watched league in the world. It's not broken. Why try and fix it? And so on. So I'm an investor mm. with a billion to invest. And I think I stick a billion into Luton. Yeah. I buy them for a hundred or mm. twenty or whatever it costs. Whatever it is, yeah. Then I'm allowed then I'll buy the best players. And Ped was talking about the way the you know NBA will work. I'll go and find that franchise player, the Messi, the Mbappé, whoever mm. it is, who lifts everything up, and I just pay them so much money they can't say no. Mm. And suddenly, Luton don't get relegated this season. The mid-table next season, the season after, they're pushing for top four, and everyone's go wow. Mm. But that guy with the billion goes, no, I have no idea what happens if I go in there. Mm. They'll hit me with points deductions because of some historical thing mm. um to protect you know i'm worth 50 billion mm. my little club because they're called little clubs mm. small clubs right small club, my little it? small club is going to go out of business what mm. I, i'm worth 50 billion it's not going to go out of business i'm not going to let it mm. so yeah. it actually could con constrain investment in premier league club football clubs simply because the uncertainty about whether you get a return on that investment mm -hmm. is, is just and the reality is, is the rules the rules are getting changed uh, so that's how good they are they're getting changed uh andy palin says i'm a liverpool fan and the premier league have made themselves look ridiculous with nice all this from the refs to the millionaires in their mansions the sport needs a reset button mm. absolutely andy yeah absolutely um Al says points deduction hurts the championship teams as you end up with a stronger team in the championship. That team would come right back up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's a good point. Actually, I like that one. A club that wouldn't have got relegated because they're strong enough to stay in the Premier League, mid-table, say, could get relegated because of points deductions and then just destroy the hope in the championship mm -hmm. simply because they'll just win for fun. Uh, Dylan says, I really want the Super League to move forward as long as those clubs are expelled from the domestic leagues. The thing is that... Shouldn't have to come to that. No, but uh, I think a lot of fans of the other 14, if we say, are on that journey now. The goal. Oh, I agree. You know what? It's chipping away. Is it really going to be that bad if they go, yes, our money will go down because they'll follow the thing but there'll still be money in football there'll still be money in everyone yes. will just have to cut the guys clock. on the pitch will still become multi-millionaires of course so, yeah. there's only certain amounts of you know I had this conversation the other week with the red men lads and a couple of them were off the thing it'll collapse if we leave right it nah, won't, it, it won't. It, everything will lessen well all the players will want to play in the Super League yeah but mm. the Super League teams can only have a certain amount of players and again, I, I will go back. Do you want to be a Premier League player on 40 grand a week, 50 grand a week? Or do you want to work in a shop for, you know, 300 quid a week? 
it's not a hardship. It, everyone would have to reset, wouldn't he? And I think the a Premier League without the six wouldn't be a bad thing because everyone you go to the mat and you sit down and you seat and you watch your team playing against another team, don't you? Mm. That's the way it is. So fans of ninety two um, clubs do that every weekend, exactly. And so. and seventy seventy two, you know, probably eighty percent of them are not in the Premier League and mm. they rock up and they enjoy their football. Yeah. It is, it is mad. You know it? what this might do, though, as well? No, because the bill started to put the independent regulator for football through Parliament and so on. Mm. Would it surprise you if there were amendments that made it stronger than it's expected to be? Because don't forget what um, the Premier League apparently or appear to have managed to convince governments is certain things like um, what we're talking about, sanctioning and, and those sorts of things, won't be under the remit of the regulator. Um, with the Premier League proven it can't be both regulator and prosecutor, it's just a chance, I think. You might get some members of Parliament saying, we need to amend this, actually, because every day it looks like it's it's not necessarily going to be strong enough. City fan says, you voted for the very rules that caught you. City voted against them and would have hoped you voted with us, too. No good trying Nobody to Nobody knows how... The no one knows who voted for it. This and was I don't, ten years ago. I don't get this with this City. Ten years ago. But I don't get this with City fans either. The thing of like you should have stood with us. What like what's this? Where's this coming from? I, I mean, you know, I wouldn't be saying anything. City might be in the National League if this if they kept this thing going. Mm. Because even if City just got rid of two thirds of their charges, points deductions and all that'd be gone. So I, I, again, I reiterate. Points deductions are not appropriate. They're not appropriate. They won't be appropriate for City, Chelsea, in my opinion, Chelsea, Forest, Everton, Leicester, and anyone else. The, the rules are ridiculous. They're ridiculous. We're saying open the rules up a bit to, so clubs can spend some money. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to get rules passed. You won't. They only needed six votes, seven votes. So Everton voting against it. Whatever it was. Whatever it was. Ten years ago. Ten years ago was very different. Ever it hampered Everton from two thousand and sixteen onwards, really. Well, yeah. two thousand and eighteen onwards. Everton wanted to spend tons of money, which I'm glad they didn't now. Like, he, but he had the money at the time. He had the money to spend, but does one have and Everton spending that big money then might have actually done something, as in got them more success, mm-hmm. which would have brought more money in, which might have lessened and that's what Bashiri said in his witness statement mm. for, for the in, first independent commission. Mm. That was his plan, wasn't it? Spend a load of money at the beginning, get mm. yourself into the elite level, and then it looks after itself. Yeah. Anyway. The, that, that's what Forrest are doing now. That's that what Forrest are doing now. Buy enough players to get yourself mid-ranking, mm. you know, secure in the division. And then try to do things you know, better. Yeah. You know, it's a beachhead, isn't it? Get on, the, get on the beach, get up the beach, get away from the water, and then kick on. But these regs don't let you. No, it is mad. It is mad. Um, right. What was I going to say then? Uh, Xabi Alonso, back in the news oh, yes. today. So let's have a little talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Oli Hernes, who was obviously a tremendous footballer. Mm. Um is he the man at Munich these days? He's the sporting pre- director. Like a, no, he's not the sporting director anymore. He's like the president. Okay. The like honorary. He's the honorary president now. Okay. Holy um, So becomes a spokesperson then. And well, yeah, because he's he, 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 outspoken. He's been through it, hasn't he? So, yeah, yeah. Um, he said that Bayern are comp- uh, competing with Liverpool and Real Madrid. For Xabi Alonso. Mm. Alonso, obviously, his contract, I think, uh, runs until 2026 at, at Leverkusen. So it's not it's not a case of... They're not going to hold him to the ago. But they, their owner, and he would, I guess he would say this, wouldn't he? But their owner has said that um, they haven't ruled out some staying. No, they, that's right. They think he may well stay if they win the league, which it looks... Yeah, he might want to take them into the Champions League mm-hmm. and prove himself. I mean, it. I'm not massively convinced on that. No, but, me neither. But, um, so uh, in your opinion, do you, do you think that, do you think Liverpool are in the driving, the driving seat or 
what where do you see him going if he, if he is to leave Leverkusen he might like we've just said he may well not leave Leverkusen but well, if, he, if he is we, we've talked about this before here haven't we mm. and and we said those three clubs I think mm. Mm. and, and what, what we said or I said then was you know it's a bit like Alex Ferguson at Man United you didn't really want to be the man who went in after him mm. right so clap so, yeah. so I think such such a a fella who's so dominant in the fabric of Liverpool Football Club and lots of what they've achieved has been driven by him and his personality mm. and, and all those things, then it's a big, big question that needs to be answered. Do you think you can go in there and continue on the dynasty? Mm. You know, um, And that's what Alonso and his agents are going to have to think through, isn't it? And because you get one crack at it, I mean, it could go in there, be absolutely fantastic. He's there for 10 years and, and he becomes a legend. Yeah, yeah. Or he could, and I, I'm not comparing them as man, managerial competences, but or he, or he could do a David Moyes who lasts nine months and his career goes backwards for the next numbers of years. Mm. Uh, a much easier decision, I think, for Alonso would be to stay in Germany, mm. go to their dominant club, which is Bayern Munich. Mm and repeat what he's done at Leverkusen and say, look, I've won the Bundesliga with two clubs. I've now yeah, won the Champions yeah. League. And I just think his ultimate destination is, you know, the Ferrari of football, Real Madrid, where everyone should land at some stage. Uh, and maybe it's just a bit too early for him to go into Real Madrid, I don't know. So it's an interesting one. He'll get the shout, won't he? That's it. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. he'll get the shout. And I, I don't think he can make a wrong decision no, Chris got not, three great choices, yeah, hasn't he? To be fair, to so he can't make a wrong decision, but some decisions may be better than others. And and if it if it were me, I'd say go to Munich. Mm. That's what I'd do. But his ex will tell. His exit will cost whichever club uh, between fifteen and twenty five million bargain um, average, this summer as it's a fixed player. exit clause. <laughs> Um, the fixed exit clause does not kick in until next summer, which is 15 million. So, so they'd have to pay more. So Leverkusen are going to be asking for 25 million, I imagine, aren't they? An average midfield player. Um, yeah, but Anna manages this so important, yes. isn't it? Um, Julian Nagelsmann is seen as someone who might go back into Bayern if they don't get Alonso. Yeah, yeah. He obviously left Bayern earlier mm. in the season, replaced by Thomas Sussel, who was leaving. Um, and he's going to be last first season. About Sorry, as well, isn't Nagelsmann left last season. Replaced by Tushel, won the league, yeah. um, and he's going to be free as well. So, what about Tushel? What's he? Where's he going to go? Talk about Chelsea again, but why would he go back when they chased him? So I don't know. Newcastle, maybe they maybe. were mentioned as well, but then do they? Does Eddie Howe deserve another crack he's at a it? Shock manager, isn't he, Tushel? So he draws all the standards. He, he's a. The problem with Tushel is he's a very good coach, yeah. but. He is in the Mourinho mode. Of, he spits his dummy out. Yeah. And some might say rightly or wrongly. I don't know. Because that's we, we, that's the first thing that pops into my head when his name gets mentioned, that he's the guy who you isn't going to be he isn't going to be there long because he will rub someone up the wrong way eventually. Mm -hmm. Or they'll rub him up the wrong way because they don't meet his standards or perceived standards or whatever. Mm -hmm. But for an emerging club like Newcastle, for example, he could mm -hmm. be great for them for a couple of seasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, really Champions could. League winner yeah, knows yeah. what he's doing. Um, but Emery's a better version of that, anyway. So, in my view, so we'll, we'll see, won't we? We'll, it's going to be very interesting to see where Xavi Alonso goes, and, and obviously there is a few managers there. You got a view? Intuitive? I think he'll go to Liverpool. Do you but, reckon? Okay. But I don't know. I mean, should ask him, and he can say Real Madrid. <laughs> I think Ped <laughs> thinks he'll go to Liverpool as well. Oh, okay. But Real Madrid, obviously Carlo Ancelotti signed an extension till 2026. But mm. then if Real Madrid really are in with them, and I don't understand why Oli Hernes would be saying they're not if they're, if they're well, not. He's if they are. He spoke to his agent. Exactly, his agent, so they'll know. It's a, a frightener if nothing else. Yeah. And therefore, if Real Madrid truly want Hernes, eh, Hernes, truly want Alonso, then Carlo will be moved to the side, won't yeah. he? And mm -hmm. I think, he wants to decide for what well, he wants. Well, he was supposed to join Brazil. This Already? summer, yeah, yeah, and he so signed a new deal with Real. Right. And as far as I'm aware, and I'd have to check this, I don't think Brazil have named their permanent mm. manager. But, but they, might well have, they might well have done. Um, I, the, I'm with you. I think the easier transition for Xabi Alonso this summer would be to move to Bayern mm. and re restart their dominance next season. They've got a great side. Go in, get them doing what you want to do, win the Bundesliga again maybe win the cup, 
and have a good go in the Champions League with them. And with obviously you've got Harry Kane, Musiala, players like that, Sané, Kimmich. They've got some great players at Bayern. If you go in at Real Madrid and you're going in with Mbappe and Alfonso Davis, he looks like he might be there. And you've got, you know, Jude Bellingham, Cameron Vingert, <laughs> Hugh Many. You know, they've got unbelievable quality and the setup now the age for dominance. A young coach having them at the burn about, mm. and you've got the new, you know, the ground redone. It means he's he's got everything at his fingertips, hasn't he? A lot of those are pre-prime players as well. They're just exactly. going to get better. So I don't know for him. Good, and, and obviously all better. three, all three are his ex-club. Yeah, and he spent the longest at Real, didn't he, Ped? I think he spent the longest time at Real. Mm. So. Then obviously Bayern Munich and, and Liverpool's at Liverpool. I think like Liverpool longer than Bayern, but some three ex clubs affiliating with all three. The easier jump for me would be to buy in, like mm. you just said. Know the league, win it, win the cup, and then you your stock jumps again. Um Real would be one where the world's at his feet. Liverpool would be one where he's got a great squad, could be Premier League champions when he gets mm. there, or they'll be in the Champions League no matter sure, what. Sure. Winning trophies. The problem for them, for him is like you said, following the man that went before Klopp, such a huge character mm. ingrained with Liverpool fans, as in mm. they they just love each other, don't mm. they? Difficult to go in and recreate that. It doesn't matter how great Javi looks and the fact he's an ex-Liverpool player. It's not going to be quite the same as Klopp. It's got, lot, have Edwards, it's got a lot to weigh up. He'll have Edwards, but Edwards is FSG's. Mm. Man. Man, he's not sport. He, Richard Hughes is the sporting director who yeah. he'd have to work with. Which Edwards might be is fine. Don Transfield, isn't he? Running the, the they're whole both going in. They're both going yeah. in fresh. Then he, mm. Richard Hughes doesn't begin his uh, thing at Liverpool until June first. He's the sporting director. Sporting director from Bournemouth. But I know that Ruben Amram's on the list as well for Liverpool, who, who was obviously in Portugal, a very highly rated coach. The Zerbi was bounced around, but I'm, I'm I don't know whether that ship sailed a little bit at the mm. minute because Brighton of it. Form little. is temporary. We'll see, we'll see, but it'll be interesting, won't it? It'll be interesting. Um, the City fan just come back. I, I don't, I do not get this from Man City. A Man right, City fan, share, why I'm a goal ever. Don't come on talking about City charges when you haven't studied them. You're doing it about Everton when you haven't studied Everton's. So, what I, I think what I did say before, unless I just dreamt I said it, but I'm pretty certain I said it. Of those 115 charges, two thirds of them at least will be wiped away immediately. Don't know if that was on this one or the other. I've, on that I've definitely before. said that I know 115. A lot of them are nonsense, like the colour of the grass or whatever. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. that's real, then that's imp- I haven't got a clue what that's yeah, yeah. all or the length of the grass and all of that's nonsense. Most of them will be brushed to one side. There'll still be a significant amount of charges, i.e., more than Everton and Forest will be significant. More than one, yeah. Everton are very fortunate to the point that the point deduction is this season and not last season when it should have been applied. Sorry, why should it have been applied last season? Oh, is that because they changed the rules halfway through that thing? Even though the Premier League had told everybody that Everton were in breach and then decided... You've got to have the chronology of events. Yeah, no you, rush. you can't just read. Yeah. You're telling us... Don't discuss it if you don't know everything. Well, I absolutely understand Manchester City's case. I haven't spoke to two or three Manchester City journalists when I've done the Oven. They've explained a lot to me, which is why I know a lot of those charges have been put in the bin. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. The, the, the stupid. Just And emails didn't get sent, so that's a charge. That, to me, is nonsense. I've read the list, right? and, and it includes stuff like Yeah, that. there's a lot of stupid things, and we know that it isn't 100, but, but right also now... stuff like paying managers offshore yeah, and things. But so. right now, there's a, it's down as Manchester City, 115 charges, isn't it? So so that's all reporting. But I am saying it's nonsense, right? Most of them. But the same thing has been written about Everton. The same thing where the chronology of it, things were changed. You can't say to someone... At the end of March in a season. Oh, by the way, lads, for the first time ever, we're, we're going to put this points deduction thing in place and we're doing it now from nowhere. When a independent KC, if you like, or whatever, was like... David Phillips. Whoever said, are you messing? You, you can't tell do it, that this quickly. You can't do it quick and they've got no... So it shouldn't have been applied last year anyway, should it? Because like we keep saying, and I apply it to your club as well, 
even though people want Man City put in the nation, you know, the, the National League and all that, points deductions, in my opinion, are nonsense, absolute nonsense, because you are affecting the pitch, what goes on on the pitch, with lawyers and people over rules that, and again, I don't know all the Man City charges where PSR are concerned. I'm just using Forrest and Everton. Sure. They're there to stop those clubs going out of business. As far as I'm aware, there's no chance whatsoever of, of Manchester City going out of business. Like, zero. Which is great. So, therefore, are then PSR charges um, applicable to Manchester City? Everton are going to a second case next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Everybody knows that. Hmm? The one and only case that City have been referred to ages ago no one has a clue when that's going to be. Mm. And if you ask the chief executive of the Premier League, when is it? And even though you're a parliamentarian and you ask, he says, well, yes, we've got a date for it, but we're not telling you what it is. That's scary. Mm. Couldn't get further away from a lack of transparency, uh, from transparency. Mm. You know, we're going to have this in secret. No one's going to know. And then we'll say, oh, by the way, it's all been done. And they've accepted a fine or whatever. Because mm. that's how you wait for it is, race. Listen, it is all a bit mad. But listen, mad. That, and Chelsea, don't forget Chelsea. And Chelsea, who, who have admitted stuff, it is a bit mad that that hasn't been seen to. But listen, that's where we stand it's on mad. it. I, don't under, I just don't understand the city like angst against Everton. I, I, I can't get my head down. I don't think them. it's angst. I think it's fear that perhaps deep down they know there's uncertainty in this mm. and lots of the great stuff that this great football team has done mm. could get unpicked because of what the owners or, or, or the Still, executives were doing. Me personally, even if they did get stripped as a City fan, it wouldn't bother me. They've had unbelievable had the success and, had the and days, Champions yeah. League. But I don't think that'll happen. Listen, yeah, it's I all nonsense anyway. I don't anyway. so either because it it's is all nonsense. to some degree nonsense. Right, uh, like last couple of minutes, we need to wrap this up. Uh, Pro Dreamer says, Liverpool should move heaven and air to get Alonso. I hope they don't get him though. <laughs> and Andy, a non-Liverpool fan. Andy, who is a Liverpool <laughs> fan, says, it. I'd love Xabi Alonso or Ruben Amaram, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. worried we'll end up with Thomas Frank. Why, just for the German thing? Let's get another German. <laughs> Thomas Frank's, I think he's a good manager, but I just wonder if his time at Brentford is maybe coming to an end, or, or this might just be one of them seasons where... Tony was suspended and it just hasn't worked. Danish, Thomas Frank. Yeah. Oh yeah. What am yeah. I about? He's got a very German sounding name. I no, don't he know hasn't. why. It's Danish. Frank Thomas Frank. I think that's Frank quite could a. Could be from anywhere. Not Thomas. <laughs> Frank. Thomas Frank Lampard. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know Brentford. If you know the way they run their business. If mm. Thomas Frank had been a player, they'd have sold him before now. Yeah. Because they would have said, there's his he peak. He has done brilliant. There's his peak, one. though. Let's sell him. But he might not have peaked. He might just, this one might be, you know, when Moyes used to have that season. Eight, dead you season. You hit a wall and you go, oh, and something. then you're back, you're back you're again. You're 17th and then you come back the next year like it never happened. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, Peter says, what's going to happen to Leicester? Well, they, Leicester apparently are getting points deducted. They haven't even got here yet. Mm. And they're getting points deducted. But also, according to, according to the stories, and again, I don't know, but they're getting points deducted if they didn't get up as well. So because they've they've basically said they weren't a Premier League team and they weren't a Championship team. So or rather getting, they were both. The or same they time. were both. So they're getting hit by both. So however it happens, apparently they will have points deduction next season. And I'm guessing if Forest got relegated, they could get done in the Championship as well because of the preview. Because pre it's it's just, you just go it's on mad. God. And if the answer to all these things is points deductions, and yet you have a judge saying sporting integrity humps before punishing clubs, mm. why have you got points then? It is all a bit mad, isn't yeah, it? Just, this is the final thing because we should be finishing. But final, final. Leon, no, it is, but apparently there's a story. Go, I mean, Leon Bailey, I think he's away on international duty. He's been brilliant. I've, I've wanted him years ago. But when he's at Leave Accusation, brilliant. He's gone to Villa and he, he has kicked this season. He's been excellent for them. But he's done an interview and said... Who he'd, with? He'd like the Let's Be Honest podcast. Okay. He's concentrating on finishing the season strongly with Aston Villa. But he'd like to join a big six team in the Premier League. He's now, last time words, I looked, he's used the words "big six. Last time I looked, Aston Villa are fourth. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, he so says. He, so he joined Chelsea, <laughs> would he? <laughs> well, he was asked if he'd be interested in a move to Chelsea because being linked with Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. That's why I asked him in the near future. And he says, "You have big teams in England. They call themselves the Big Six: Arsenal's and Chelsea's. It's always been my dream." to play in the Premier League and I'm playing there right now. Who wouldn't want to go to a massive team, especially coming out of Jamaica? 
do you know how big that is for the country, especially being who I am as well? It shines more light and has been my focus whenever overseas. It's to use my platform to be able to shine light on the country and young talents. It's difficult for us Jamaicans to make it in Europe. Yeah. Not what I want to hear from one of my players. Not I'll be when honest. he's talking, uh, you know, he plays for the the club who's played the second most number of seasons in the top flight of English football. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Villa. And they, as you rightly say, they could be in the Champions League very soon. It is mad. But he's 27 it? in August, so maybe he's thinking one last chance to... Yeah, but Villa could quite easy get in the top four. Well, yeah, they're might, there, they, they carry on, well, yeah. but then he's in the Champions League anyway, and Villa are a yeah. big club. But, you know, no, Chelsea, at what, 10th or 9th, 10th at the three moment? Three of those big six of Villa getting the Champions League won't get in the Champions mm-hmm. League. <laughs> so mm-hmm. Surely he won't go to one of those. I just... I, it's, surely it's, the Lord Champions League is what everyone wants, you know? It is. It does frustrate me. I know, listen, the, the players, they've got a short career and they, they, they do mm-hmm. go on international duty and it all seems to come It does come get on. twisted, though, as well. There is words, though. I don't know, are they? Well, the quotes. Okay, oh, the quotes. If someone quotes me, I'd be absolutely... Fuming if it was wrong. Fuming if I I didn't say that and say I wanted to leave. You get misquoted all the time. Oh, I know. Well, people do it. (laughs) People do it. Um, But anyway, it is what it is. It is. But You always get this, internationals. Oh, you always do. I'm just saying, I... You know, for Villa having a term, if Villa were like 11th, 10th, 9th, they might go. Well, and he, well. he was having a particularly great season. And people himself. are going, Oh, yeah. would you play for them? Then yeah. you go, Well, why are you asking that? But you'd understand from there. It would the, be but, a respectful answer, wouldn't it? Yeah. But I just think, yeah, there is what it is. Listen, so I imagine Villa fans might just go, Yeah, well, my problem. Maybe he gets two more goals and two more assists, though, because then he'll join that. The elite. Figure. Yeah. The elite. Figure. How many is it, did you say? It's Ob Watkins, I think Pet said he was the forty fifth right. one to do it. Ten goals and ten assists, more than yeah, in that in the season. Goals and assists and, and brilliant. So he's had, yeah, he's had a great season. He has, he has. There you go. Well, right, thank you everyone who has joined us today. Uh, much appreciated. Like and subscribe if you, if that's what you want to do. We appreciate it very much. We will be back tomorrow. Dylan just very quickly says, "Is Lukaku's dad Bailey's agent?" <laughs> <laughs> they love it. The Belgians love it. They love a good, a good. I wouldn't uh, mind moving here. Yeah. On when they're on international duty, they do. They? they do. Um, and Michael correctly says the fifth place team in the Premier League could also have That's also Champions true. League so and Villa. Stand corrected. It Villa won't. Two of the six. Villa won't. In my opinion, won't fall out of the top five. They've been brilliant. The coefficient's still all right, isn't it, Ped? For- yeah, Dandy. Have we dropped a third as England? Still okay. on, though, the race, isn't it? It's close. So, Just we'll see. a couple of our clubs to go to the finals and win them, yeah. 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 Cheers, James. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, everybody, um, yeah. I just meant to ask this question because it was on okay. the other one. Just looking at the league table. Uh, Stan went to see Big Dunk's team at the weekend. Ah. Didn't see a home win. But you can see what he's trying to do. They have good patterns of play. Not quite the players to implement it, but it was a great day out and thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, Peter Beryl says, they gave Forrest six points but gave two back because they cooperated with the Premier League. My point is they shouldn't have got six points then being reduced to four points. Shouldn't they have got six points and then it get reduced to four points on appeal? Uh, don't know, mate. Not sure. No one knows. Um. And Stan says, all right, lads, I'd love this Super League to take off. Been saying it for ages. Get rid of the big six. It'll make them all so much more competitive. Fans could dream again. Money has literally ruined the game. It's starting to implode. Now, look at the money we've wasted on. Not very good players. Look at the football we're watching. It's rubbish. Money hasn't improved us. I know that because we've been badly run. But come on, let's get football back to where it should be. A supporters game. Absolutely. And Gavin says, seeing a lot of chat regarding new kits coming out for the Euros. DHgate must be loving the Nike Adidas prices. Crazy. The official player version is £125. The thing is, with official player and fan jerseys, they're not the same. Different colours, designs, etc. The MLS shirts look almost different. Ted, have you got anything to add to that? You're the shirt. The shirt, man. £125 quid for a player edition. Robin bastards. Okay. It is bad, isn't it? It's disgusting. 130 quid for a kid's kit, it is. Is it? Yeah. Full kit. What, like the England one, you mean? 
That's terrible, though, isn't it? I thought it was bad enough when I'm buying my granddaughter's, you know, a club one for whatever it is, 80 or something. That's 130 mad. quid. That's disgusting, that. How much the shirt for the kid must be, like, 80 quid or something? Yeah, it's disgusting. That is disgusting, isn't it? They're taking everything, aren't they? They're making everything, like, almost out. Not out of reach, but it's everything's just going up and up and up. And Those kids' shorts must cost more than the ones Ned's wears, yeah. And else, you know, my sandwich and bloody co-op cost more than the shorts and headwears, you know? <laughs> especially when the pyjamas, especially when he had a pair of pyjama ones on yesterday. No, no, Amelia controls herself with those white legs of his over there. <sighs> right, anyway, listen, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for having the chat and, and joining in and good. all that. Even the Man City fan who no, especially. seems very angry, I don't especially, know why. Especially, especially. There just you worried. go. That's all, just yeah. worried. Yeah. But fair play. Now, anyway, have a good day, everyone, honestly. It's always good to talk. It's great to hear different opinions from fans of different clubs and all that. But I think the one thing I would like to see is that we all think about the game as a whole. And it's difficult, of course. But sometimes you have to take a step back and go, is this game going the way we want it to go? Or is it? are we being shunted in a direction that is all about protecting a few teams constraining teams for the sake of a dollar or a pound or a euro whichever and, and other currencies are available because it <laughs> seems like that and that that one we just spoke about there in terms of the cost of replica kits for a bloody european championship for your country is now 130 pound that is absolutely disgusting and it's no wonder people do go to these places that make these kits cheaper Mm. Because oh, get their own replicas made. But about uh, yeah, you know, if you've got a kid and you, you know you're a, all right, you you want England to do well, say in the summer, boy. And the kid wants the kid. The kid wants a kit. Are you really spending hundred and thirty quid? You haven't no, really you got it. it for 50, you can get it for forty quid. The full kit there. Yeah, yeah. You'd go. No, it's all right. I'll have this replica one that he can go out and play in all summer. It doesn't matter if it starts falling apart yeah. by December because he's going to stop wearing it because he's not going to be wearing it exactly out. so <laughs> yeah I think it's absolutely mm. grim right take it easy everyone thanks for joining us see you later bye